Hi folks, sorry for the poor camera work, I'm a little slow today. Let's see, so it's about 1.24, it is the 28th of October, Tuesday, that one says 75.2, that says 75, that says my batteries are all charged up, <clears throat> and this is 16.2. So, welcome to Tuesday. This is a uh, basically a requested video, and it has to do with um, CDI ignition systems for a Honda, all ATCs, all-terrain cycles, specifically the 1984 Big Red. But let me start off generally and then get specific. No matter what, when you're looking at an ignition system for an all-terrain vehicle, and this happens to be the copy of the 200S one, right? This is your CDI. What does your CDI need to function? It needs a source of power, which is the stator, right? For almost all, as a matter of fact, I think, actually make it all Honda ATCs use a stator for power. They do not use 12 volts. What else does it need? It needs ground, right? Because you're putting power in and you don't have a ground. You're not putting power in. You're doing nothing. So you need a ground, right? So power, ground. From ground, right, as this thing is generating power, it's getting pumped up nice and big, which is what goes out to your primary on your ignition coil. So once again, power comes in, gets pumped out, goes out as a pulse, gets stepped up and makes your spark. How does the CDI know when to spark? It knows when to spark from the pulse generator. So it needs some kind of timing input. And last but not least, typically you want an on and off switch. Right? You gotta turn this thing on and off somehow. If you can't turn it on and off, you, you know, um, for some of us, we know to reach down and, and hit the choke or do something with the carburetor, but from a um, selling a bike point of view and uh, making it so that the consumer protection people don't get on your case for killing people, you put the on and off switch on the um, CDI unit. So given that's what you need, you basically have five or six inputs to your CDI. Right, and let's go specifically look at the um, 1984 Big Red. I just happen to have one of these bikes in stock, so we we can go look at it specifically. Yeah, please. Thanks, man. So here's my 1984 Big Red. Just a little history on this. This was, a family bought this bike and the kids beat the hell out of it. And they were considered dangerous and I guess the kids might have crashed it a couple of times. So what they did is um, they sold it off. They sold off this one and a 200S. I still have this one. I don't have the 200S. As you can see, when I got it, it was in uh, nice shape. Unfortunately, I did this. I was uh, riding it. It was uh, frigid cold out. And I got in between two trees. I was flying. And um, obviously, the front wheel fit. The, fen the peg almost fit. And the fender got cracked. So, that, yeah, that was my fault. That was stupid. If it wasn't for that, the plastic would be in perfect shape. You can see the seats, nice. The gas tank's really pretty nice. Um, unfortunately, the tires went to heck. I kind of, this bike ended up back here during, I, I call it my lost days when I was um, busy with the kids and so forth. So I kind of put it away and I never, never got back to it. So... Here it sits. It's unfortunate, but um, I got to put tires on it. But other than that, it's pretty good. 
So, what did I do? I took the gas tank off, obviously, right? Gas tank off, disconnect the, the fuel line. Took the CDI off. This has a round plug CDI. And I took note of the colors on the wires on the back of the plug, and then I probed each and every one of them. Okay. And... Um, I started out with, you know, this is one of those cheap meters, comes from Harbor Freight, and I hooked one line right to ground, you can see, and that goes through the alligator clip right to ground, and I made sure that once again, you know, I have ground, it comes down to about two ohms, one or two ohms. Then the first thing I did is I checked, um, I think I'm in the right place. Yeah, I checked it. The um, green wire, and you can see it's at zero. Um, next door to that is the black wire. This one, I'm getting about 30 something ohms, which is strange because it goes to the on and off switch here. And you see, when I turn it off, it goes down to two, which is basically zero, right? This meter isn't perfect. When I open it up, it goes up to 42. So I'm not sure if the switch is functioning quite right. That should really be an open circuit. All right. Um, and I probed the rest of these here, just as I showed you, right? You know, just stuck it right, right in here. And here are the readings that I got. So, I first checked the green, which is ground, dark green, right? Yeah, let me show you that graph too. Right, dark green is ground. So I checked dark green on the harness by putting it in the plug, as I just showed you, which is engine and frame ground, and I got less than one ohm. What I did was I checked the engine and I checked the frame and all up against that green and I got less than one ohm. Made me very happy. Blue, yellow, right there, right? Blue, yellow is the CDI pickup. And I got about 30 ohms. Once again, blue, yellow, CDI pickup to ground, 30 ohms. And once again, I did that by, by proming the, conduct, the connector. If you get Anything less than 50 ohms, you're probably okay. If you get a dead short, you're screwed. Or less than 30 ohms, I'd start worrying about it. Or if you get more than 100 ohms, I'd really start worrying about it. If you get an open circuit, obviously you got a problem there. Black to ground with the switch on, I got about 60 ohms. And with the switch off, I got zero. Um, I'd rather see that as an open circuit, so I'm wondering if my switch has some corrosion in it. Black yellow, which is the primary, primary ignition coil, right? Black yellow. I got less than one ohm. That's not a surprise, right? You expect the primary to be pretty low. Black red ground. I got 260. That's the stator. Right. And let me show you these here. Let me get them all in. So you can kind of write these down. Hold it there. And let me hold this here. And last, the gray to ground. I have an open infinity ohms. What that is, that's your neutral safety switch. When you turn the bike to on and pull the string, if you're not in neutral, well, first of all, your starter will not engage. Your electric starter won't engage. But these things also have a pull starter that also disables your, your CDI so that you don't pull the string and have it fire up and take off at, up from underneath you if it's in um, if it's in um, reverse or if it's in gear of any kind. So anyway, there's all the ohm values, there's all the color coding. Sorry for the penmanship, but my hands like 
are old and arthritic. There's the color coding here. And if there are any questions, please, please call me, or please don't call me, obviously you don't have my phone number. Please um, um, email me and, and, and ask the questions. I would start out by just going from the point of view of what is this thing seeing. Um, just off the top of my head looking at this, right, you have your standard uh, advance right in there. I would have a tendency to, um, if I figure out that my um, CDI unit is bad, I would probably get one of the square box um, China CDIs. Um, they work with the 200 S's and I would hack it in there. Um, obviously ground is easy. You know, it's not that big a deal to figure out which one is the pulser, which one is that, which one is that. But now at this point, you all your neutral safety stuff would be gone. You That stuff would not work. So, um, I mean, unless you kind of do some interesting stuff with wiring it up against your, um, against your on and off switch. So... Uh, I mean that's that's probably what I would do to get the back bike back to running. Um, you know, uh, hopefully you're not letting any anybody ride a three wheeler who could not uh, be taught that it's you, you know unsafe to do certain things, right? Okay, folks. Um, once again, let's put you there for another couple of seconds. Thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for asking questions. A lot of times when I go through one of these exercises, I learn quite a bit. Like when I just, um, first of all, I've compared the colors now against all the wiring diagrams. So that makes it a little easier for future troubleshooting. The other thing that's, uh, that's important to me is I've also discovered that this on and off switch has quite a bit of resistance to it. So when I go to fire this bike up in the future, I'll know to, um, to clean the contacts or spend a few minutes with that on and off switch or quite honestly, perhaps even dis disconnect it before I attempt to fire this bike up. When this bike was put away, um, as a matter of fact, in this shed, though this shed wasn't located here, this shed used to be up against the wall over there, um, it actually ran. Um, but what happened is the tires eventually got flat, and then they got cracked, and then now you guys can see the situation I have. All right, once again, thanks for watching, commenting, subscribing. Remember to keep your feet down, keep your head up. Enjoy your lives. Enjoy all your days. Thanks, guys. Bye.